very good afternoon to all am i audible can you give me a feedback yes sir yeah so is there any background music coming up on your phone yes sir so let's wait for 2 minutes more as we have only 1 minute left out please tell your friends to join fast i'll be back within 2 minutes Yes. Sir, sir, did you see the recent news regarding the government giving orders to opening the college around ten? No, 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 I'm not aware. Okay, I think it's already one minute past two p.m. Let's start the session. Right. So please tell your friends to join fast. I'm starting the session right now. Okay. So how was your journey in power electronics? Yes. Any anyone can share their feedback. How was your journey in power electronics? Did you, did you learn um, all those things which can make magic from AC to DC? Or DC to AC, vice versa. Yeah, Deep, can you tell me how is your experience? It was quite good experience, sir. Yeah, so I think everyone learned that there are at least four types of power converters, which is AC to DC, DC to DC, DC to AC, and AC to AC, right? so you know the where is the use of power converters basically it is from power conversion from one form to another right now you have to say if there is a dc motor and if you have an ac line then what kind of converter do you need what kind of converter if you have an ac line and you have a dc motor in order to run the dc motor from an ac line what kind of power converter do you need ac to dc yes ac to dc now in order to control the speed what do you need you need a controlled one right you cannot give an uncontrolled voltage thyristor you need to control right you need to control yes, the amount of voltage that is being given on the dc motor then only you can control the speed right so yes, electric then it forms then, then this application of power electronics for this drives section right for drives for that is running for uh, that is a running electric motors then it becomes electric drives so electric drives is nothing but the application of electronics to drive electric machines electric machines can be of what types ac or dc types right so we will be learning all these things so without any delay let me start the session so all these slides has been prepared and presented by me and uh, yeah so first of all you must be wondering why should you study this electric drives right why at least why 
so let me take you to, through the recent changes in the world uh, which needs this subject to be studied so electric drives is actually the key to the sustainable future what do you mean by sustainable future so such development without harming the environment Something yes like perfect perfect now that it has to be at least profitable also and uh, there should be no harm right so what is the sustainable future e cycles don't you think the electric bicycles are going to make a revolution the transport sector last mile journey so i cannot hear you yeah don't you think the e cycles are going to make a big change in the industry in the transport sector am i audible yes sir yeah so just think about it so is it not so that e cycles are going to make a change obviously sir, yes, can right? you describe the working mechanism of that e cycle sir how does it e cycle work? what it consist of it consists let me i mean it doesn't require any power to run right no no it requires power sir how will you give in some what something movable object power like it has some battery in it or what yes this side if you can see properly this side has a battery right this side has a battery and this and this this section has a motor and this handle where the hand of the user is it has the control unit controls means accelerator right and so actually the motor is situated in the back side so this is the motor section if you can see the red line can you see the red line red circle yes sir just, just drew it so yes, this sir. side has the motor the front wheel does not have the motor i just give it by fault a mistake so uh, this side has the motor this side has the battery and it has also pedals so pedal assist right it can have so have the pedals also and this side has the controls so with this and somewhere there will be a charging point right so this is going to change the way we actually travel on the last mile what is last mile that means you reach from some place to bhubaneswar and now you have to travel from bhubaneswar to your college so what do you have so what so what do you do you have you take on ola or something right like an auto <clears throat> but it's not possible to take the thing regularly so people buy bicycles scooters scooties that is called the last end last mile journey right so e cycles are going to make a huge difference in this sector why because all the charging is going to be electric the motion is electric so it is very fine there is no emissions there is no gas pollutants and you don't have to go to a petrol station to refill it it's very easy and very fast then you have e bikes hopefully right you know e bikes e cycles e bikes yes sir electric bikes right so that is also going to make a revolution it is already in the market everyone knows it some 3 4 years ago we had been seeing the yo bikes coming up and they are very silent as you have already seen and then you have electric cars right which is uh, the very famous the tesla one and in india we have the mahindra e2 mahindra other cars tata is also i think uh, neon something tata neon so they are also launching the electric cars right so how is the car going to operate is going to operate through electric drives only no ultimately there is one one battery pack and then you have a accelerator and the all the controls in front of you and finally you have a electric motor which is running the car right now you have the e buses also i hope everyone knows this about this e buses anyone there who is not enjoying the class there are only 18 students it's so bad to see such a low strength ab ab abhijit is there atul raman are there 
or you are taking lunch and sleeping hmm? get up get up you are the youth so e buses are there which are already electric buses and finally you have just a second you have the electric planes as well as this the drones electric planes planes have also become electric at least the drones have become electric like quadcopters and so they are also electric right so ultimately the entire entire uh, all the transport sector all the major sectors are going to be all electric at least all those four sectors of transport and when they are electric they will be powered by solar energy or some kind of free renewable energy like solar biomass as you have already studied in the fourth sem i was teaching that res also right so r res stands for renewable energy sources so the idea is that to have free energy from all these sources and to use this free energy for transport can you tell me one such event where the focus on uh, transportation through electric means uh, gained momentum like uh, the era of online education boomed in the time of corona right so there is was an age there was an era where the transportation sector through electric gained very much huge momentum so what made this happen if you look into the history sir environment huh? sir environment environment, sir, environment. we are is almost... okay environment is okay but that was the reason but that was not a major push like uh, online education was already there right but suddenly during the corona huge thing boom okay no everyone has to go through online education so that type of push so that type of push came in the market when there was a world war and uh, the oil uh, there's a world war between america and the oil exporting countries and the oil exporting countries in order to suppress their enemies they stopped their oil supply right and when they stopped their oil supply lakhs and lakhs of cars and scooters and all types of vehicles ic engine based vehicles were standing just on the roads empty roads because they have ran out of fuel then the government understood that if they want to win a war they have to make the transportation sector also electric right so that was a major push so now from then onwards the government started to have its own power supply through nuclear they tried to make everything all electric the majorly the transportation sector so there was a big push towards the electric drives also so here we are coming to the syllabus so unit 1 is having introduction to electric drives and thermal modeling of motor so that is unit 1 in details if you go it consists of power modulators that is power converters then there are choice of electric drives you will be understanding how to choose the electric drives exact proper electric drives right the proper rating the proper type and then fundamentals of torque equation speed torque conventions and multi quadrant operations multi quadrant operations i hope someone 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 remembers this like four quadrant operation right four quadrant operations of power converters that means might be a four quadrant chopper or a dual converter right specifically in the transportation sector this four quadrant operation is very much required because you have to go from forward reverse and all those things so multi quadrant operation is very much in use then equivalent values of drive parameters components of load torques what kind of load torques are there right in a load now nature and classification of load torques how many types of load torques can be there calculation of time and energy losses in transient times steady state stability load equalization control of electric drives and then finally the thermal model of motor for heating and cooling classes of motor duty and determination of the motor rating this is the ultimate thing that you have to find that detail is a motor rating at least the how much of motor will be required so uh, say if you have to uh, install a lift 
and you were a design engineer then can you tell me for five persons how much uh, how much hp of the motor has to be there any idea so you don't have any idea can you repeat the question say in our college lift you know that lift which which works in the new yes, building sir. so when the design yes, engineer was thinking okay that maximum limit of the lift has to be around uh, 5% yeah, yeah, yeah. so yes, how much 630 of, kg ha huh? 630 kg so how much of uh, that power has to be there in the mo- motor how much hp so that he had to determine right so that is first of all one thing uh second thing is that environment in which environment that uh, thing has to be like uh, if that same lift was being operated in a mines then do you think the motor would be the same any idea if it was in the mines underground mines i think you know uh, that lifts are always operational in the mines also So yes what kind, so what kind of what kind of of motor would be there in case it was in mines any idea no sir you know in mines if, if there is a spark even and if there is a methane gas it can cause a huge fire right yes sir so what do we need we need to make the motor completely insulated no gap no air gap has to be there so the cooling has also to be taken care of right so the type of motor that has to be used there is completely different so so as a design engineer you have to think okay which what is what kind of environment is there and all those things then only you can select the motor type Okay, so unit one point two is closed loop speed control, phase lock loop, PLL and position control. Now DC drive and speed control. I thought so. Syllabus two is basically uh, composing of uh, this DC drive things. Means you'll be learning how to control the speed and torque of DC motors, specifically DC motors. So in that thing. in that thing you have dc motors and their performances study of different braking methods tell me one braking method which is super efficient regenerative yes perfect that is in fashion now every electric vehicle must have regenerative braking facility without which it is completely not desirable right so the di- study of different braking methods speed control methods of armature voltage control transformer and uncontrolled rectifier control controlled rectifier fed dc drives and chopper controlled dc drives in chopper controlled dc drives one is the most major thing what is it chopper controlled dc drives if you want to control a dc motor using a chopper which kind of chopper would you like to go for what kind of motor what kind of chopper so tell me if you have chopper control dc drive which kind of chopper would you like to go for so chopper in the sense like four quad chopper yes four quadrant chopper is the best one right so first we will go for two quadrant chopper right and then if we think that it is required then we can go for four quadrant chopper also two quadrant chopper is enough but some some people might be wanting for the uh, a for the reverse gear so in the four wheelers you might go for four quadrant chopper obviously depends upon which kind of motor you are using okay so this is 2.2 that is starting of dc motors multi quadrant operation of dc motor using reverse switching and dual connector then induction motor drive so this is the vital thing because induction motor is a is the it's called the horse power of the industry right so 
it's called the horse power of the industry so learning induction motor and how to control the speed of induction motor is very very important right motor here so it's induction motor drives speed control me clear some yeah so it's induction motor drives that means it will have the speed control how to control the speed then it will have the pole changing method then the stator voltage control then variable frequency control from voltage source voltage source inverter control that is vsi control then variable frequency control and finally uh, vyf control is also there vyf control then csi control rotor resistance control and slip power recovery right so all these things are there you will be learning soon and then uh, second part deals with the synchronous motor drives synchronous motor variable speed drives and the variable speed, uh, frequency control so a bit of problem start just a second so then we have the traction drive where we'll be learning the nature of traction load the calculation of traction drive ratings energy consumption tractive effort and drive ratings specific energy consumption maximum allowable tractive effort conventional dc and ac traction drives 25 kv ac traction semiconductor converter control dc motors and then the dc traction employing polyphase ac motors and ac traction employing polyphase ac motors then the application of drives which is basically the application through microprocessors and microcontrollers you will have the areas application areas and functions of microprocessors in drive technology that means in which type of drive which type of uh, this drives are required this microprocessors are are required and then the control of dc drives using microprocessors that is unit 5.2 as you can see so what do you get at the end of the journey you will have been going through unit 1 2 3 4 and 5 So at the end of the journey, you will be able to understand the load equalization and its necessity, importance of flywheel, and nature of load torque characteristics and its classification. The second one is you will be understanding the different braking operations of DC motor and learn different speed control methods and its application. Then analyze and learn different speed controls of induction motor drive which is a most famous uh, motor in the whole of the industry any industry you go induction motor is always there and its advantages over conventional control methods then you will learn traction drives and factors affecting the coefficient of adhesion and calculation of tractive effort and specific energy calculation then you study the application of dc and ac motors in industries give you a good amount of knowledge about the all these electric drives and you will feel confident enough right so what are the top companies recruiting for drives engineer you know the lab in which i'm sitting for is sitting in and taking your class it itself a drives lab it's called a acw drives lab so first of all i would like to take the name of this company in which i'm sitting right now this uh, lab so this is called acw euro drive lab as you can see there are some control boards above uh, at the side of my head can any, anyone see it yes sir yeah so all those tables are each of around 5 lakhs and they have all the drives installed in there and they are very professional in it and uh, this sir. company is called the just a second it's this company is a very premium company it's so called the bmw of the car industry like it's analogous to that yes sir where where do this company come for recruitment recruitment ah uh, you have to check their websites right nowadays everything is available in their websites only right. 
so they might be hiring from their own sources that you have to always keep on checking their websites then there are siemens is always there abb is also playing a big role in this drives thing uh, then the um, lift in which you go up and down every day in this college that is Schneider. also the schneider uh, i think everyone knows about it and then finally you have Re regal is also there there are other also but these are the major things all over the world these are the major uh, you know drives companies now what are the job roles you'll be getting in these companies if you are selected if you study it properly go further for some type of professional courses you know this course is a preliminary course where we you will be understanding the basics of the electric drives industry what are the things and then if you are going for another type of professional course which will give you the company specific data and all the things then you you might end up being a application engineer a service engineer a design engineer you might go for r and d you might go for higher studies through gate mtech phd and so called post doc then there are miscellaneous roles also at who there for multiple roles and in order to have a video reference about these electric drives you can go to nptel and uh, find out this uh, fundamentals of electric drives by iit kanpur by professor shama prasad das he has uh, all the lectures in that so here is the reference i have given that uh, link is also there right so if you just go to youtube and just uh, type this fundamentals of electric drives comma dr professor shama prasad das you will feel, you'll, you'll find out the whole series okay so what about textbooks so as you know the textbooks are fundamentals of electric drives this is the most uh, important book which i'll be referring to that is gk dubey i think you can have a soft copy of this book also from uh, internet websites and then you have polyelectronic converters applications and design by ned mohan so my first priority would be gk dubey not ned mohan my first priority is gk dubey right then there are some other books like electric drive concepts and applications there are some reference books which is bk books yeah. this is also one of the good books for electric drives so if you have your interest ready you can post your interest by scanning this qr code you have this uh, link also there and if you have any queries which you want to ask anonymously without letting anyone know then you can go to this padlet and or scan this qr code i'll be sending it to your uh, chat box now you know some people are there who have a lot of questions but are very afraid to ask in front of the crowd so for them this is the best place to ask so i've given it in the chat box also right so anyone having some questions you can post in the padlet and then i'll be answering it in the next class which i'll be taking right so this was the introduction so so tell me if you have any doubts till now any other questions queries you want to know about this subject okay so i think we are ready for the so i will giving you two minutes to think about it any question you will be having we can be answered right now in the meanwhile let me so please take your time think about it one minute is there yes so can i show the book section again yeah sure just a second
just like that. Yeah. yeah. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you Thank can you, write sir. or have a screenshot of it also. Obviously, we'll find it in the recording section. So GK Dube is the preferred book. So please find it in the internet. I think you might get a soft copy of it. Okay. So can we move now to the next one? So if anyone has any other queries, they can post it in the chat box right now. Any any other queries I'm waiting for? Else we can start. Okay, so welcome to the first class now. So, what do you mean by electric drive system officially? What is the official statement? So, it is the study of the electric system involving controlling electric motors in both steady state both steady state and dynamic operation this this word is very important just a second let me have the person we have oh yes so this word is very important steady state and dynamic operation right so it is a study of electric system involving controlling of electric motors so it is specifically the control of electric motors through power converters in both steady state and dynamic operation what do you mean by steady state and dynamic steady state is what which time yeah steady state is which time let me ask a few people Rabina, can you say which what is the difference between the steady state and dynamic? Priyambada, Samir, Satyam, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Just tell me what is the steady state and this dynamic operation? What is that? Come on, I need your participation. Don't be like you're dumb. Get up. We have been working so hard to make this PPTs and all things. So just put your interest into this. What is steady state? So Say if a vehicle is going at around 40 km per hour, there is no changes in the speed. What what will you call the acceleration? Then what is the acceleration at constant speed? Steady state. Zero. What is the acceleration at constant speed? Zero. Yeah, zero. So, so my internet connection is not stable. Uh, please keep on uh, giving me some replies because uh, the internet connection is not stable in the college now. Right. So I don't know when I need to get cut out. So acceleration is zero, right? So steady state obviously means there is no change in the speed. That means either it's in the rest condition or there is a constant speed, right? And what is dynamic? Whenever there is an acceleration, non-zero acceleration. That means when the vehicle is speeding up, when it is starting, when it is speeding up, or when it is deaccelerating. That means when it is braking. All those times we call it the dynamic one, dynamic conditions, right? So it is achieved through taking into account the characteristics of mechanical loads and the behavior of the power electronic converters. So two things are important here, mechanical loads and power electronic converters, right? So two things are important, you know, can you tell me the difference between taking a person at the back of your bike and taking a gas cylinder, fully filled gas cylinder at the back of your bike? Is there any difference between the two? Yeah, any difference? If you have 
a person sitting at the But, back of your bike and the bike and the road is not good how will be the experience and if you have a fully filled gas cylinder say 20 kg or 30 kg of gas cylinder at the back of your bike and you are traveling through the same road what would be the difference in your operation can you tell me so in case of gas cylinder we have to keep on looking it after it and controlling it whether it it is it do not fall or anything happens and in case of any person sitting behind they can adjust automatically yes yeah so does your driving depend upon the type of load you are carrying yes, yes sir yes definitely right so that is the issue that what type of mechanical loads are there as per that the driving has to be done right so you can understand the difference now now what is the present so in the past what was there and in the present what is there so in the past what was there in order to have in order to supply a load say this is the load right so this is the load you needed might be a dc motor right but the dc motor had to have a what dc field it had to have a dc power supply right the dc motor had to be given a dc power now where would you get a dc power from a ac source if there is an ac source how would you give the dc power supply to the dc motor tell me Yeah, guys, speak up, speak up. Don't sit there like anything. Time will pass away. Prashant, so battery Samir. or AC supply? Huh? Battery or AC supply? Battery or AC supply? How long would we supplying through the battery? Sir, we can do that by uh, th- <laughs> using thyristor. No, in the earlier times, uh, no thyristor was available. no thyristor no diode no power diode diode was available but it was very of it was very low power not even 1 watts it was very very low powered no th- forget about the power diode if power diodes were not there that means thyristors were far away right so forget about the thyristors the power diodes were also not there so what would be the procedure to get a dc power supply from an ac source so earlier people used to have an ac source and give it to an induction motor this would be a three phase source so they would give around 440 volt ac and this induction motor would run and this shaft was coupled to the shaft of the dc generator right so the dc dc generator also rotated right so dc generator also rotated Uh, made a power supply so the dc generator gave a dc power to the dc motor and by controlling the amount of uh, say armature voltage and field supply then we would control the load right so this was quite difficult right so what is the most problematic things it experienced first of all it experienced a uh, something called a cost in order to con- in order to just uh, feed the dc motor you employ two more machines having more cost than the dc motor itself or at least the same cost right so the price would be tripled right and then it was see what is happening this is a this is mechanical energy to electrical energy and then to electrical energy to again mechanical energy right so what is happening multiple stages of power conversion is happening right yes sir so if this is happening there is always loss because the the motor parts or the generate parts are always rotating rotation means that it will be friction and any rotating part will definitely 
have lesser efficiencies right i think we discussed out that because of that only wind turbines are not so much in use and the solar ones are very much in use solar panels because of the rotating nature of wind turbines right so anything which is, is rotating it has to be given lubrications so and regular maintenance has to be there right all these things and then there is a problem of civil works also in order to have uh, this system installed you would have to first install this motor this induction motor then you have to first install then dc generator then install this dc motor and then install this load right so the civil works are also increasing just think of it how big the problem is but if there is no other solution then people had to take this step in nowadays what would we you do after learning power electronics nowadays after learning power electronics what would you do would you employ so many machines to drive a single machine no sir what would you do you have ac power supply right and you have a and you need a dc power supply dc power supply what would you do rectifier ka use kar sakta hu yeah rectifier perfect so you would employ a ac to dc rectifier right but if yes, you are going for uncontrolled rectifier that means you cannot control the voltage output so what was the voltage output like 2 vm by pi cos of alpha right yes sir that would be the vdc but if you want to employ a controlled voltage you will want to go for a controlled rectifier ac to dc rectifier right so this yes, would be sir. 2 vm by pi cos of alpha if you change alpha you would be changing the speed of the motor so by changing alpha up and down you would be changing the value of dc power supply available here and then you would be able to control this load right so the system would have become almost one tenth of the size one tenth of the cost and very much easy to control right so that is the magic of this electronics which is which it has done in the in this electric drive sector So without learning power electronics, it is almost impossible to learn electric drives. That is why power electronics is first, and then this comes up. So any doubt on this? No, sir. Excuse me. So okay. So what are the advantages of like electrical drives? I think yes, we have time. So this class is up to two fifty, right? Yes, sir. so what are the advantages of electric drives over so are there any other kinds of drives available we are talking particularly of electric drives right so are there any other types of drives available mechanical drives ha huh? mechanical drives yeah mechanical ic engine based drives ic engine based drives anything else in your bosch or extrot center of excellence you might be seeing any other types of drives what about this pneumatic drives forgotten yes sir hydraulic yes no that is pneumatic is air control then there are hydraulic also hydraulic is liquid based right non compressive liquid pneumatic is uh, air based right it is compressed air based so air based drives are also there hydraulics are also there ic engine based drives are also there so ic engine based drives can you just give me a very popular example ic engine based drives So IC engine based drives are what bikes, scooters, scooties, 
electric cars so those those are all been driven by what ic engine right so th- those are called ic engine based drives pneumatic drives uh, you have already seen in the boss section if someone has gone and hydraulic drives as you all know it is quite popular in the crane sector and uh, the the weighing machine sector right so but what is the advantages of electric drives over all these drives what are the advantages let us explore right so first of all flexible control characteristics flexible control means uh, just think of it uh, your fan controller it's so little yet it's so flexible right so it is flexible control is being given by this uh, electrical drive then particularly when power electronic converters are employed it is much more flexible then it can give a wide range of speed torque and power it can give very high efficiency it is almost low noise can you feel this thing in in case of electric bikes in comparison to ic engine bikes if you are driving a bike it will give you some sound right but if you are driving an electric bike you hardly notice that a bike has passed by you right does it not happen yeah any yes sir yeah, why are the others not responding have they all gone to sleep hmm sleeping in home guys get up this is a new semester we need your energy like you need me to be energetic i also want you to be energetic then only this uh, circular feedback will make the classes very interesting it cannot be only one sided your your participation is also required right so then there is low maintenance requirements if you have an electric bike electric car scooter anything the maintenance issue is almost nothing almost nothing if you have a ic engine based bike you will have to change the mobile after some kilometers you will have to change whatever the things are like the chain socket and all those things after some some kilometers but if you have a electric one you don't have the mobile section also there nothing is there we just plug and play right then cleaner operation is there so clean operation means there is no exhaust coming out of those things then uh, electric energy is easily transported then this is adaptable to most operating conditions you know you can not drive an ic engine inside water right can you drive it can you drive an ic engine inside water no sir what will happen mm. so water will get inside and yes, it will sir. stop the op- operation simple but can you drive an electric motor inside water can you drive an electric motor inside water yes so then what kind of drives are used in boats and ships see boats are ic engines are definitely there in boats but the ic engines are not dipped inside the water they are giving a uh, what to tell they are, they are transmitting the motion through some type of uh, i think they use some kind of ropes uh, some kind of um, some sort of mechanisms by which the action by which the motion is transferred to the uh, blades so the ic engine is not dipped inside the water have, have you have you have you noticed this thing na Yes, yes. The ice engine is not dipped inside the water. It is just above the water. It is obviously above the water. So they, and, so they, they work above the water and they drive a mechanical system. Yes. Through which they yes. A type of uh, type of transmission system. Particularly, I think there will must be a, a string type of system, string or chain or pulley, something like of system. So mechanical drive system is there, right? but uh, it is not dipped inside the water but can an can a electric motor go inside the water and work haven't yes hmm haven't seen yet obviously yes obviously yes there are full proof water proof electric machines which can go completely inside water and still work right it can still work 
perfectly without any problem uh, there are waterproof i have been working in a project called auv 1000 it's called av 1000 in that they uh, took uh, some kind of thrusters that is motors which costed them 5 lakh rupees per piece and it was completely waterproof completely waterproof and they used to drive the main thruster using this so after having so many advantages then why do we hear only a few names like tesla and all these in, in this this it field break it can break in the reverse direction of okay so there was a problem with the internet it ended up abruptly so i think the class is already over it's 250 so am i audible yes sir okay. so one question yes so after having so many yes. advantages okay. so after having so many advantages then why we only hear few names in this field like tesla and only few names are there bhai to ek factor pe thodi depend karta hai na bahut sara factor pe depend karta hai paisa aisa bhi can you just again repeat your question my internet connection is not working properly in college hello sir can i answer this question so, let me hear the question first na so after having so many advantages in this sector so mm-hmm. why do we hear only few names in this field like tesla and many only few names are there as comparison to mechanical drives and ic engines hello 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 yes sir yes so i couldn't hear the question properly i think he is asking that where there are only few names you know if there are few names then don't you think it's an advantage for you people also to explore the industry there are multiple startups now there's multiple startups which are aiming for electric bikes electric bikes are the most common thing then mahindra is also there you know there is one car called rt90 which is being sold at 600 rupees only 600 rupees you go and it's called a service car it's an all electric car right so it's the see electric drives are not particularly limited to electric vehicles they are they are in every sphere there in every sphere one most interesting uh, application of electric drives in is in electric vehicles that is something different but electric drives are everywhere if you are uh, wanting to go in a lift then also it consists of electrical drives right so don't constrict your vision only to electric vehicles there are lifts also na in the college there is lift also which is operating on the same principle then there are acs refrigerator systems all are working with the electric drives so electric drives is the bigger set and within the electric drives an ev sector is also there where electric drives are also playing the an important role see in the evs the batteries are also playing a big role right but does it mean that if i am talking of batteries am i talking of evs only no na so are you getting the point yeah, please give me a feedback yes sir yeah any other question you wanted to we have some time i think it's already 50 still we can yeah any any other question okay so the next class you have is tomorrow at the same time that is 2 to 2:50 pm we have a class so meet you tomorrow okay